Hey, it's Coach Taylor from SmarterTeamTraining.com. I'm very excited to have a guy named Dr. Jim Stepani on the phone here with me, and, and I may have even uh, butchered his, his last name a little bit because I haven't even asked him how to pronounce his name. Uh, we went back and forth on, on email after reading his book. I went on the humankinetics.com and, and got a hold of his book, Muscle, um, I just want to make sure I read the Encyclopedia of Muscle and Strength, and it was actually the second edition that I read, and, and I was intrigued, so I, I just shot him an email. Uh, actually, I connected with him on Twitter, and then we then shot him an email, and we went back and forth until we could connect. So the, the people that are interested in this field, to, to, that are interested in seeking knowledge or wanting to find out what has worked for others, uh, step up to the plate. Just send an email. The good ones are going to make time to help those that are interested in finding out more information. Uh, Dr. Jim, man, I, I'm, uh, I'm pumped to have you on the phone. I'm looking forward to having a, a very candid conversation about uh, metabolism and nutrition and supplements and, and strength stuff. Uh, and, and just tap into that brain of yours and find out what's worked for you, my man. Awesome. I'm uh, really excited to be here, Robert. Uh, and uh, you did pretty well with my name, uh, better than a lot of people have in the past. So <laughs> thanks. <laughs> That's good. I, I know you have a, an unbelievable academic track record, and, and obviously the, the results that you're doing and the people you're getting a chance to work with speak for themselves. Uh, I mean, getting a chance to talk to a guy who's uh, you know, studied cellular and molecular you know, anything, uh, physiology specifically at Yale, uh, I, I'm pretty pumped about that. I, I'm, a, I'm a research guy. I love reading research. And so to having somebody at, at this level, uh, it, it just has me excited to talk to you. I, I want to know a little bit more about you from a passionate side. I mean, we can go through the X's and O's from the resume, uh, but what really gets you excited about working with others and helping others achieve their own greatness? You know, it was really uh, reading muscle and fitness back in the day. I've been uh, a fan of Joe Eater since I was, uh, geez, you know, seven, eight years old, uh, my father would get me the magazine and I would be reading about things like muscle fiber types and metabolic rate. And, and you know, Joe had a lot of uh, interesting researchers from back in the day writing for the magazine. So that's, you know, fitness and sports have always been my passion. And, you know, as a young child, seeing that there was actually a whole world of research and these scientists that were actually studying what uh, I was intrigued by was, you know, really uh, of interest to me. And so I kind of knew what I wanted to do from a very young age. I don't care if you're working in the athletic world or, or the, uh, the private sector. It doesn't make a difference, to be honest. Everybody's trying to get leaner, uh, to degree, decrease body fat, uh, to gain muscle mass. I mean, what advice would you have or what advice do you share? What kind of template? Is it just nutrition only? Is it program design? Is it exercise selection? I mean, what advice would you have for clients that, that want to get lean and, and gain or, or lose body fat or gain muscle mass? You know, my uh, I'm a firm believer in variety. And uh, sort of one of the sayings I learned uh, from another exercise scientist by the name of Dr. Jim Wright was that everything works nothing works forever. And it basically, you know, it sort of underlines the real, you know, core of variety and, you know, to really, you know, what periodization is all about. And I'm, you know, I'm a firm believer in program design uh, being of utmost importance, but obviously nutrition uh, as well is important. Uh, so as far as training goes, you know, it's really about variety continually switching it up, whether that's rep ranges, weight you're using, rest periods between sets, exercise selection, exercise order, you know, all those acute variables. And with nutrition, I'm also a firm believer in finding what really works best for an individual. You know, the difficulty for me is, you know, I do program design and nutrition that's going to reach, you know, potentially millions of people either through the magazines, the websites, uh, and whatnot. So it's hard to really produce a diet that's, you know, one size fits all. So, uh, you know, one of the things that I've learned over the years is to sort of uh, provide just a template for the diet and then a lot of options uh, so that they can find foods that work uh, for them. But even, you know, nutrition-based, just the philosophy of nutrition, whether you're continually dropping carbs to lose body fat uh, or whatnot. You know, it's really about, you know, you've talked about carb backloading. You can talk about um, intermittent fasting. You know, these are all things that can work, uh, but
but it's really finding what works for that person and what's comfortable uh, for that person as well. So I'm a firm believer in trying to find, you know, what's going to keep that individual consistent um, and also what's going to produce results. My background is primarily in the sports performance, the athletic world, and, and now that I'm in the private sector, I'm, I'm more and more intrigued about what other people are doing in different aspects of the field, from the, from the bodybuilding to the fitness competitors to just, just the broader range of everything that we get a chance to be involved with in the private sector. But when you're designing a training program, I mean, how do you differentiate the, the metabolic uh, conditioning, uh, the strength, the sports performance, uh, the, the, the figure and posing practices and skill sessions that go on with athletics or whatever endeavor we're doing. I mean, how do you program for all of those things uh, specifically or broadly? You know, I kind of work with mainly, you know, I do have a, you know, a handful of uh, either high performance athletes or, you know, sort of actors, celebrity types. Um, but really the core of my, what I do is, you know, just reaching the average Joe, in Jill, if you will. It's something that anyone can sort of pick up uh, and put to practice. Uh, and, you know, for me, I really, my program design is really about hitting a variety of goals. So even if your goal is fat loss, you still have a goal of gaining strength because after all, why not get stronger, uh, you know, while you're going along? I mean, you know, it it increases not only performance if you're an athlete, but also just quality of life. So, you know, my programs involve a lot of periodization and a lot of uh, periodization that sort of mixes it up where there, you know, one program might, you know, involve both linear uh, and nonlinear periodization or, you know, linear and reverse linear as well as uh, nonlinear uh, periodization. So, uh, you know, I like to get very uh, creative with, you know, the program design because, you know, that's going to produce the strength gains. And that's also going to help increase muscle mass. So, you know, and then I, you know, I throw in a lot of conditioning with like what I call card acceleration, which is instead of having downtime between sets, you're actually doing some type of high intensity interval training whether that's between each set or whether that's after each muscle group or even at the end uh, of the program. So, you know, I'm, uh, I use a, a, an endless, endless variety. I mean, I literally have hundreds of, of different training programs that are all unique in the way that the, you know, periodization is set up uh, in, and then the intensity techniques, whether I'm using supersets, uh, drop sets, rest pause, uh, you name it. So um, it's really, uh, for me, is sort of creating these programs that aren't just very focused on one goal in particular, but are producing a variety of goals. Because like I said, most people that are using my programs are interested in building some muscle while they're getting leaner and getting stronger and getting better conditioned. I want to talk to you a little bit about the, the supplement and the nutrition plan. I don't know if they're separate or, or the same, if, if you want to talk about the approach that you guys have. Uh, what process do you go through before suggesting a nutrition plan uh, or supplements on top of uh, on nutrition or that type of thing? Uh, walk me through that process a little bit. I, I see a lot of people just kind of just given a, a, a recipe, if you want to call it that, and saying, hey, go do it, it'll work. Is there more to it, and, and how do you kind of incorporate it on a daily basis? For me, you know, nutrition and supplements are one in one. I mean, you really, you know, new dietary supplements are just, a, you know, supplementing your diet. So, you know, there's a saying that goes is you can't really supplement a crappy diet. Um, so obviously diet is the first foremost uh, important aspect. You know, if you take someone who's a very uh, green, you know, very new beginner, uh, do they really need to start supplementing? Probably not with, not, you know, maybe some, uh, you know, worrying about just micronutrient intake and, you know, proper uh, intakes of, like I said, micronutrients just to make sure that, you know, they're getting the micronutrients they need to support, you know, metabolic function, to support uh, muscle growth, um, to support recovery. So depending on the level of uh, their training, um, experience, you know, that's really what I start with. If it's, if they're, 
like I said, are very new to uh, training and conditioning, then I just start them with a solid diet, making sure they're getting adequate protein, making sure they're getting adequate carbs to, you know, their timing, their nutrient timing is on, on track and they're getting, you know, plenty of uh, ample fat as well. We can't forget about fat for the diet. Then if it's someone who has a bit more training experience, then we start worrying about other nutrients, um, even breaking down the protein into not just total protein, but, you know, are you getting adequate, some adequate amount of whey protein and in casein protein, especially around workouts, as you know, what the research is now showing is that when you're giving a blend of protein sources, so a fast digesting way and a longer uh, digesting protein like casein protein, what's happening is you have a longer uh, extension of the period where muscle protein synthesis is elevated. So I'm a firm believer in using a blend that has at least the whey protein and a micellar casein to really maximize muscle protein synthesis and the recovery and the growth and the strength gains that come along with that. Then we can start getting into adding, if we want more branch chain amino acids, uh, obviously creatine, uh, beta alanine, I'm a firm believer in, and betaine uh, as well, with which some people may know as trimethyl glycine, but uh, betaine, you know, a lot of the research that came out of my old lab, the University of Connecticut, showing very substantial gains in muscle strength and power with betaine, and then newer research really actually showing greater gains in muscle mass as well when individuals were taking at least uh, 1.25 grams of betaine twice a day. And, and I'm a firm believer in doing that before and after workouts. If I had an opportunity to train with you or get a chance to review or consult on, on uh, an exercise program, and again, I want to bounce back and forth here if you wouldn't mind, are there exercises that you avoid in a, pro in a program or encourage in a program? Does, does training age or chronological age uh, play a factor in those things? Exercise selection, no. I would say more, you know, training age is more for me about uh, volume and uh, intensity techniques. So the more the more an individual has, uh, you know, under their belt as far as training experience, the more volume they tend to need and the more uh, they need to sort of push the envelope as far as uh, intensity techniques. Like I said, whether that's incorporating rest, pause, negatives, uh, drop sets, and whatnot. Uh, as far as exercise selection, it's really about the goal and the person and the individual. Obviously, if there's, you know, some sort of shoulder issue that they have, you know, you have to be careful with anything like, you know, behind the neck presses, behind the neck pull downs. However, if you're talking about a bodybuilder who is very interested in making sure he's maximizing every muscle fiber possible in his body and doesn't have any shoulder injuries, then using things like behind the neck pull downs may actually work quite well for him. Uh, and there's actually some research showing the difference in lap fiber utilization when the bar is behind the neck. And again, you know, we know, you know, we know that that can lead to issues, but if it's done properly, the range of motion used and the weight is used properly, you know, I'm a firm believer in trying to use a variety of exercise angles uh, for every different uh, muscle fiber, especially, you know, for bodybuilders. So, the exercise, and then, you know, if you're talking about an athlete, if it's a power athlete, obviously, we want to incorporate a bit of power training in there, some power cleans, uh, you know, maybe even a variety of snatches, uh, you know, jump squats, you know, and then, you know, what's the, what's the main goal? Is it, you know, when I talk about burning fat and, you know, creating a program for someone that's also going to enhance fat loss while they're gaining strength and muscle size, then I'm going to use a lot of multi-joint exercises, which are going to help to burn more calories during the workout, um, but also help to keep that metabolic rate elevated long after the workout is over, which, you know, a lot of people focus on calorie burn during the workout, but, you know, if you're working out for an hour a day, uh, you know, you've still got 23 hours left in the day. So 
my real goal is to focus on ways to enhance the metabolic rate and the amount of fat that they're burning after the workout is over, those other 23 hours out of the day, which is one of the main reasons why high intensity interval training works so well. It's really not about the calories burned during the workout. It's about the amount of calories and fat that's burned after the workout. The concept of recovery has uh, been a topic that if you go to any conference or clinic or read a, basically an article on any website nowadays, it's constantly being brought up. Uh, are there any suggested strategies to aid in recovery, eating, sleeping, hydrating being the three main concepts, but there, is there anything that we can do to enhance uh, even more or even be more accurate in the way we approach each one of those aspects? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of debate lately about the, you know, sort of anabolic window and recovery window. Look, I'm a I'm a firm believer you can sort of tweeze through all the research and debate whether you need, you know, fast digesting carbs post workout uh and how critical that is, but you know, working with literally thousands and thousands of athletes and getting the feedback from, you know, literally hundreds of thousands of people online, you know, I'm a firm believer in focusing on your pre-workout and then your post-workout nutrition. And, you know, one of the first reasons I'm a believer in that is the convenience of it. You know, if there's a time of day that an individual is going to focus on their nutrition and their supplementation, it's going to be right around their workout window. It's not going to be while they're at school the rest of the day. You get too busy. It's not going to be while you're at work. You know, most people don't have a drawer full of, you know, creatine and uh, carbohydrates in their office. So, uh, you know, I really like the convenience of, of focusing on most of your nutrition right around your workouts. But, you know, uh, definitely from an anecdotal standpoint, and, you know, that's another thing that I'm a believer. I'm not one of these, you know, even though, you know, I have a strong background in, in, in academia and in research you know, doing my postdoctoral uh, research fellowship at Yale School of Medicine, I'm a firm believer in looking at the real world. You know, we can't design a perfect study. You just can't do it. That's really going to answer a question. It's just too impossible. There's, you know, you need to have too much control in the lab to really be able to look at how a true individual lives, how they, re how they respond to training. So I like looking at both factors, what's going on in the research, what's going on in the lab, but then actually seeing it in the actual gym with someone who's a high performance athlete, with someone who's very, very stringent with their diet, uh, and then talking about the results that they're getting versus, you know, a, a group of, you know, 18 to 20 year olds who claim that they're trained, but we really don't know what the, you know, what they're training uh, truly look like as far as uh, real consistency and, and intensity. So you can't, you cannot ignore what happens in the real world. And when you have, you know, feedback and data from thousands of individuals in the real world, that to me actually means more than a study of 12 or even 32 individuals. So, you know, anecdotally speaking, when I work with athletes, they feel the difference when they focus on getting fast digesting carbs for recovery post-workout, getting, like I said, a blended protein, a whey, and at least a casein in there to extend that muscle protein synthesis. When they're getting creatine post-workout, uh, when they're getting betaine uh, post-workout, even beta alanine, uh, and I'm a believer in getting at least some glutamine uh, post-workout, as well as carnitine. Um, you know, what the research has shown, uh, Jeff Volick at the University of Connecticut uh, started seeing some really interesting uh, results with carnitine and the way it can enhance uh, muscle recovery when it's taken properly. And what the newer research out of the UK shows is that it's very dependent on an insulin spike. You can't, the muscles are not going to uptake enough carnitine unless you're consuming it along with fast digesting carbs. And the same can be said about creatine. So, you know, when you're getting these ingredients post-workout, the fast digesting carbs aren't even just about glycogen replenishment at this point. It's also about creating an environment 
so that the creatine and the carnitine and the other amino acids that you're taking are the uptake by the muscle is really maximized. So that's, you know, one of my main strategies for recovery is making sure you're having those nutrients as close to possible after the workout is over. I'm definitely, you know, a firm believer in that. Do you monitor loads by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, there's so much stuff now with the GPSs and the heart rate monitoring. And, and again, you start adding all these other different, uh, the high intensity interval training and the, and the feedback you get off of, even if the machine you're on from the caloric expenditure estimation, that type of thing. I mean, how do you monitor a load when you're incorporating metabolic conditioning into a program? If we're talking about, you know, what I do the majority of the time, it's designing a program that's going to work for a uh, majority of individuals that I'm not going to be holding their hands for. So, you know, when I typically create a program, I will know whether this is for someone who's a little more advanced, um, a little more, uh, you know, intermediate, advanced, uh, or if it's, you know, even not something that a beginner uh, should take on. So it's sort of like a general um, overall based on the intensity of the program. If I'm working with someone uh, individually, Obviously, there's a little more, uh, a lot more that goes into, you know, monitoring their, um, you know, the results and how they feel on a daily basis. You know, whether it's even just something simple as how they're feeling uh, for that day. I'm a firm believer in sort of um, creating a program for that day that's based on uh, how that individual uh, is feeling. So, you know, if they're not at their best, maybe we'll, you know, we'll consider cutting back. It's not going to be a day that they're going, uh, you know, 90 to 95% of their max. Um, maybe it's not a day where we're going to throw in some rest pause or negative rep training. So, you know, like I said, I'm a really firm believer in sort of looking at the individual from that, you know, taking a snapshot of them right then and there before they're actually starting the, that workout for the day. I know you get a bit, get an opportunity to make a big-time impact on a lot of different people in, in a lot of different uh, media formats uh, in person and at events. Uh, I know through the book, obviously, through the online, through the one-on-one the -on -one type of environments that you provide and in a training standpoint, even, in, even also from the research aspect. If somebody was interested in actually pursuing just even some of the paths that you're taking in this field, I mean, what kind of motivational message would you have for them, and, and how would you go about helping them achieve their own greatness? You know, the real message that I try to send out to people is that learn as much as you can. When I went to, uh, you know, graduate school, uh, I sort of created my own coursework. So even though, you know, there were courses that weren't required, um, like animal physiology, comparative physiology, I took genetics. Um, when I was working on my master's program, which all led me down to, you know, different areas of research and a wide variety of areas in research. And I was really interested in the, you know, learning as much as I could about the human body and how it deals with a variety of stresses, whether it's altitude, uh, whether it's extreme heat, um, you know, resistance training, um, more endurance training, uh, because that really gives you a better take on uh, what the body, you know, how the body adapts, what goes, you know, from the, like you said, the molecular and cellular area, you know, resistance training and, and uh, athletic training and um, exercise physiology, you know, 20 years ago, we never really thought much about what's going on at the at the uh, level of the gene, and now we're really realizing that, you know, every time you eat something, uh, every time you go into the gym and do a workout, it's literally turning on <laughs> and turning off certain genes. So, you know, what's going on is really down at the molecular level as well as the, you know, the, the, the full systemic uh, level of the body. So, you know, my real message is to learn as much as you can. Think, you know, I know it's cliche to say think outside the box, but, you know, really create your own, you know, your own path. Uh, 
and you know add things that you already are passionate about uh and are uh have you know uh ability at that you can bring to the world of fitness that sort of creates a different niche for you you know i was as a young kid i was interested in reading and writing um and you know that really allowed me to take what i was learning in the lab what i was learning in the gym and organizing it in a fashion that helped people really understand um you know and and really got them to absorb that information so you know it's you know having that background and that interest in writing is really what was essential uh to to allow me to really create my own path and do you know what i do which you know really started through you know working for uh, you know, being a science editor for magazines like Muscle and Fitness and uh, Flex Magazine and, you know, working with bodybuilding.com uh, because it's essential that you not only are knowledgeable, but that you can take that information and provide it in a manner that lay a lay person can really understand and apply in their own world. So, you know, those messages are really Learn as much as you can uh, and take something else that you're good at and passionate about and combine it with combine it with your passion for fitness. That's a great message there, Dr. Jim. I really appreciate you taking some time out of your day. I know you're a very busy guy. Uh, for those of the uh, that uh, don't uh, or, or maybe can't relate to uh, how busy our schedules can be, I mean, this is an ongoing process back and forth uh, probably for a couple months now. And uh, if you're interested in learning more, uh, you, you just need to stay persistent and keep asking questions and, and being very flexible and, and respectful of, of professional uh, schedule. Uh, again, Jim, man, I really appreciate uh, you know obviously us going back and forth uh, and, and you know, obviously getting an opportunity to get on the phone here. Uh, if anybody has any questions about anything we discussed, uh, obviously they can go and, and check out your book at humankinetics.com. Uh, I would encourage anyone to check out Encyclopedia of Muscle and Strength, the second edition. I thought it was a very well-read, uh, very well-written book. I enjoyed it, to be very, very fair with everybody listening. Uh, but if they wanted to go above and beyond that even, how could they go out connecting with you and finding out more information about what you have going on? I'm a firm believer in, in making myself as accessible uh, as I can. So I use social media all day. You know, I'm literally tweeting uh, right now So <laughs> uh, while, we're, while we're here. So get me on uh, Twitter. It's just uh, at Jim Stepani, so J-I-M-S-T-O-P-P-A-N-I. Uh, same for my Instagram, at Jim Stepani. Uh, you can also get me on uh, my Facebook uh, page uh, as well, and you can, you know, get more information from me on my website, which is jimstepani.com, and you can get a lot of my programs as well at bodybuilding.com. Well, again there, Jim, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you, man. I, I, I follow you on Twitter and, and Facebook and all the other uh, Instagram and all the other things that are going on just to see if I could uh, pick up a few things from you, my man. I'm looking forward to meeting in person. Uh, hopefully this is a launch pad for us to do some things down the road and, and just stay connected. Uh, I, I have uh, a bunch of questions that I've already been, I'm sure, sure you heard me uh, pecking on the keyboard here as I was asking questions. So uh, I'm looking forward to following up and just tapping into that uh that brain and that experience and knowledge that uh, you possess and, and just learning more from me on a regular basis, my man. Thanks, Robert. Really a uh, pleasure uh, being here and honored uh, that you uh, wanted to have me on the, on the podcast. So thanks so much, and we'll definitely be in touch.